This video will discuss a physical interpretation into what the terms in the Hartree-Fock energy correspond to. So over the last few videos, we've been showing how the energy of our ground state Hartree-Fock determinant is equal to a, the sum of a few terms. We have a sum over all electrons, I equals one to N number of electrons, of the core Hamiltonian integral, the spatial integral, where we've integrated out the spin here in each of these cases, as indicated by the parentheses rather than the uh, pointy brackets. All right, and that plus the pairwise sum, sum over all pairs of electrons, I equals one to N, J equals I plus one to N, of the Coulomb integral of those two electrons, of those two spin orbitals, minus the exchange integral if they have the same spin of those two spin orbitals. So the first term here is saying that each electron has kinetic energy and attraction to each of the nuclei. That's what our one electron integral is. That's what our one electron operator is, as we've been sh showing. So it's the kinetic energy operator plus the uh, electron nuclear attraction operator between the electron and all nuclei. And the second term is how each pair of electrons has some Coulomb and exchange interaction. The Coulomb interaction being the classical electrostatic repulsion between these two charge densities and these two spin orbitals. And the exchange interaction coming only if the spins of those two spin orbitals are the same, either both alpha or both beta. And this is a term which arises only due to the fact that our electrons are in a determinant which has to satisfy the anti-symmetry principle. Okay, so each of those uh, three types of integrals that I mentioned there, um, we can indicate those more succinctly as having this kind of one electron energy HI or core Hamiltonian energy, whatever kind of term you prefer, as um, one of these types of notations, either the traditional physicist Dirac notation, the chemist Dirac notation, or the spatial orbital notation. Uh, similarly for this Coulomb integral, where we have uh, electron one in spin orbital I and electron two in spin orbital J, would be Jij, this Coulomb integral. And the one where we have exchanged electrons one and two in the, the spin orbitals, uh, not in their complex conjugates, but in their uh, normal spin orbital part. That being Kij, the, the, the spin, the Kij, the exchange integral of those two, and whether or not it's zero, of course, depending on whether or not the spins of both of those spin orbitals are the same. So in that case, we can write the ground state determinant energy or our Hartree-Fock energy as being a sum over the core energy plus a, of each electron plus the pairwise Coulomb minus exchange integral or Coulomb minus exchange energy of all electron pairs. So as I mentioned, J is the electrostatic interaction between all pairs of electrons, K being the exchange interaction between all same spin pairs of electrons. So let's try to put these notations into practice a bit by using the example of a boron atom. So boron being the fifth atom in the periodic table, its ground state electron configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. So we can imagine we could have uh, either three spatial orbitals or five spin orbitals that we might consider here. Psi1 being the 1s orbital, Psi2 being the 2s orbital, Psi3 being one of the three 2p orbitals, doesn't matter which. And we could equivalently have chi1 through chi5 indicating the spin orbitals uh, being spin up and spin down in each of the spatial orbitals. All right, so what is the restricted Hartree-Fock energy of this particular boron atom then? So we're assuming restricted Hartree-Fock, meaning that uh, our electrons in Psi1 have to have the same spatial orbital as they do in Psi2. So those are restricted to be the same there. Um, yes, for boron, we might want to use UHF, but I'm using RHF as an example because uh, I want it to be somewhat interesting of an example, and uh, we're using RHF through the rest of this chapter. So that's what we're doing. All right, so if we look at each of these five electrons, each of them individually is going to have our core energy or the kinetic, 
kinetic energy plus nuclear attraction. It's attracted to the boron nucleus, and it has some energy due to its own momentum. So H1, H1, H2, H2, H3. So that's 2H1 plus 2H2 plus H3 for our one electron energy, all of these terms. Then for our two electron energy, the pairs of electrons, there's going to be, let's see, five, five times four over two should be 10 pairs of them, as we note here. So the electrons in psi one repel each other, J11, through the Coulomb interaction, not the exchange interaction, because their spins differ. These two electrons uh, have Coulomb and exchange. They're the spin up electrons in uh, spatial orbital one and two. J12 minus K12 uh, from this sum here. Same thing for the spin down electrons, J12 minus K12. Uh, because it's restricted, both of these numbers are the same um, because they're both in the same spatial orbital. All right, and then going across J12 for each of these pairs, they are opposite spins, so no exchange interaction. Um, for the two electrons in spatial orbital 2, they have just a uh, Coulomb interaction as well. Um, this one has a Coulomb and exchange interaction with the electron in orbital 3, uh, J23 minus K23. And the, this one, being opposite spin, just has the Coulomb interaction between itself and an and, uh, electron in psi 3. And of course, the electrons in psi 1 also are repelled by the electron in psi 3, um, the same spin one by both Coulomb and exchange, the opposite spin one by just Coulomb. So adding up all those terms together, we get our two electron energy being J11 plus 4J12, 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 2K12, 1, 2, plus 2J13, uh, that should be 1 and 2, minus K13, plus J22, plus 2J23, minus K23. So conceptually, in terms of what our Hartree-Fock energy should be, it's just that simple. We take all of our electrons, we assign them into which uh, spatial and spin orbitals they should be in, and then we say all of the electrons have a particular core energy, all of them, and then we look at the pairs of them. All pairs have a Coulomb interaction, and all same, same spin pairs have some exchange interaction. So that's it. So conceptually, physically, that's what our Hartree-Fock energy terms look like. So as we get more and more mathematically abstract and down into the weeds for the rest of this chapter, uh, if you get lost about what each of these things mean, uh, you can come back here to get grounded in terms of uh, physically where each of these terms is coming from.